Our first presentation is going to be on field day and a kind of a review of the field day activities. All right, John, kick us off. Okay. Um, do you have a clicker? Yes. Good evening, so I'm going to give a summary on the CW station for field day. And um, what I found was field day started about a month before the actual event. And uh, it had what I would call three stages. And stage one was preparation, and that I thought was the most important one, and that's the key to success. So what I did was I listed all the items I would need, and then I took an inventory of what I had on hand, and what I would have to order. So I was all okay with rig, power supply, and tuner, uh, and the keys, 50 feet of coax, a pigtail, um, but I needed more rope, so I went to visit Lowe's. Needed a small browning rod and wire. Um, I got that from Amazon. And the big thing was an NFED antenna, and uh, so I audited a few of those and found that the best one for field day and for my needs was going to be an LNR and Fed's quad. So I got that from DX Engineering and it's good on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters without a tuner and it uses stubs on 20, 15, and 10. So a tape measure, 50 foot open reel, a screwdriver, etc, etc, <coughs> slingshot and, sp and spin cast fishing reel to get the antenna up in the fan. So which, which is down, down there? Okay. Um, next, I did a schematic of the antenna. So I went online and used a right angle triangle app to enter the height of about 30 feet in length, which was 65 feet, sloping to at least eight feet for the matchbox. And that gave me uh, a bottom length of about 59 feet. Um, so I made a note of all those measurements. I need uh, between a suitable tree, the matchbox, and the pavilion. Then I did some initial tuning of the antenna. I put it up in the backyard, but it was only up about 20 feet, and I noted the SWR on each of the four bands. Um, it was really tuned to be a horizontal, and I planned on running it as a sloper, so it was tuned a bit low, and I made some adjustments there. Next was programming of the radio. Um, you could use a key for the entire event, but you're sending the same thing over and over and over and over. So for repetitive exchanges, I just use the memory slots on my Kenwood. Whoops. Okay. Um, that, they're available if you add on the VGS1 chip, which I had done a few years earlier. And so first slot was the W4BS call sign, second was thank you, 4A Tennessee, and the third was 4A Tennessee, 4A Tennessee, or repeat to respond to again. All right, and the next thing, which was very important, was practice. And my goal was to get standard field day classes and sections into deep memory in my mind. So I made up a list of call signs, many from previous year's field day, and assigned various classes and sections to them and saved them as a text file, which I uploaded to Morse code.word world <coughs> word list trainer. Well, I adjusted the character speed to various speeds to simulate different operators, so varied between 18 uh, to 40 words per minute, and uh, chose random option, listened, and logged them. Then I checked the flash card that flashes after uh, it goes for <coughs> accuracy. So um, that, that was invaluable, really. Um, then I packed up everything the night before, Carefully packed up the rig and keys and bubble wrap in individual boxes because they're uh, sensitive. I used two totes, one for the rig and sensitive equipment and the other for everything else. Then headed to bed early for a good night's sleep. Got up at 5 a.m. on field day, ate a healthy breakfast, walked the dog, packed up the van, gave the dog a tranquilizer a few hours before leaving because she has separation anxiety, so she, she ended up being okay. Uh, and since the heat was blistering, I brought an SPF 50 plus sun hat and headed up to the park. Whoops. 
So uh, stage two was, uh, well, the first part of stage two was set up. And um, when, when I got to the park, I found that I, I needed to concentrate on one thing at a time so it wouldn't be too overwhelming. So I didn't think about operating at all, just concentrate on getting that antenna up. Um, and the, the great thing was I never needed to ask for help. The helping hands just came over and pitched in, which was awesome. It was a real community effort. Um, I measured out the line to the best tree, and with help, the slingshot fishing reel did its job. We got it up, put up a spider beam 10 meter mast, not all the way, and fixed the matchbox to that, and then the coax um, uh, to the uh, pavilion. The ground was pounded in, wire attached, and I had enough cable to coil it up to act as a choke for common mode current, and uh, so that, that was really good. I did SWR testing using the rig expert and Mr. Tyler at KQ4 QEV. Got some experience using that, um, uh, so I think he appreciated that. The antenna did need a bit more tuning in that configuration. Took it down, tuned it, and then we were ready to go. And uh, stage two, after setup was break. Um, after spending a few hours out in the sun in that extreme heat, I uh, really had to drive home to get in the air conditioning. I was sweating buckets out there and actually was quite dizzy. So showered, change of clothes, let the dog out, rest, and then aim to get back to the park for park for 1 p.m. start time. Whoops. So we started operating Saturday afternoon, just shortly after 1 p.m. But um, we were now class 3A rather than 4A because there was a station cancellation. So I had to reprogram the radio into the memory slots. Um, the setup proved to be excellent. Propagation was just fantastic. Um, Mr. Dana, WI3B, showed up early on and offered help with logging and uh, signal interpretation, I must say. Within an hour or two, we had logged both Alaska and Hawaii, and California was coming in loud and clear. Um, we found there was interest from both young and old in the various keys at the CW station and the novel experience of hearing CW exchanges going on, which is probably unique uh, for this generation. I don't think they've heard much CW before. So we operated Saturday afternoon till around 3.30, 4.30 p.m. Again, break. That was really the secret to operating in that heat. Drove home to get in the air conditioning, let the dog out, eat, rest, and aim to be back at the park around 6.30 to 7 p.m. Arrived at 7, Mr. Dana was still there, helped again with logging and pulling out signals, and we operated until around 10 p.m. and then called it for the night. So, uh, overnight break, showered of course, <laughs> sleep, woke up around 5 a.m. to get breakfast and walk the dog, get back to the park. So, uh, I was alone on Sunday morning, but I was able to do both exchanges and logging without losing too much time. Um, propagation was fantastic, and uh, we did have a wind come up, which was a huge blessing. Uh, really cooled things off, and I was logging contacts from all over. Um, Miss Barry, WB4SWP arrived for a visit. She helped with logging for a while. And um, we operated until about 12.30 p.m. Ended with 201 contacts. But I later discovered one duplicate, so officially logged 200. And that was a pretty good feeling. I thought that was successful. Stage three then uh, was takedown between 12.30 and 1. Again, many hands made light, light work. Appreciate the help, got the rig and sensitive equipment packed back up. Mr. Scott, KM4 PMU, helped take down and roll up the antenna with some pointers from Mr. Joe, WA4 OVO, and drove home in the afterglow of a successful field day. So I think by taking breaks in the air conditioning and getting adequate rest, the weather-related challenges were met and overcome. Um, so you do have to know your limits, because at one point I was feeling dizzy in the heat. Um, and so I just made an exit to get back into air conditioning. Um, I know I would not have been able to pull an all-nighter, but kudos to those who managed to do that. Um, we still made a good showing in the hours the CW station was in operation. Maybe next year it'll be 24 hours with more operators. But it was really nice to see so many people show up and young people manning the GOTA station. It was fantastic. Um, so here's our uh, end result. Um, we did DX to France. We covered all of uh, 
area two, all of uh, five, six, eight, nine, and the rest we got, we, we, we made a fair showing that. So had a lot of fun. Um, the wrap up was to export all of that to an ADIF file and upload it to Google Drive. So that's what we did. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? And so uh, I've got a collection of pictures here. I think Joe's going to talk a little bit too. Uh, but just so you guys can see what was going on, it was hot. I told you it would be. <laughs> yeah, uh, 101 uh, there on the thermometer at one point. Uh, of course, I think most everybody was in the shade except for me. I was not the smartest one there, that's for sure. So uh, it was a great opportunity to learn. Thank you, Ham, for doing a class. How many people went to his class? So. And then here is our satellite guys, hard at work. <laughs> <laughs> and then the GOTA station, and I'm sure Joe, you'll mention more about the GOTA. We got the maximum number of points possible for GOTA, which was just outstanding. And then uh, it's a little blurry, but that was the uh, single sideband station, Fred Miller. There was numerous. Huh? 20 meters. 20 meters. Okay. The 20 meter vertical that he talked right. about last month. Exactly. He had it up and operating on uh, field day, and it performed. We'll yeah, numerous we'll pileups. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, here's Carolyn and Dana, and, and Dana, thank you for your help as well doing the CW, and that was a, a screenshot from uh, her screen. And now we're to the digital, and uh, I didn't do as well as I've done in years past. Um, I decided to try something a little different, so I hooked up to my uh, little tar heel on my Jeep rather than putting an antenna in the air. And um, I just didn't, uh, didn't get the coverage that I would have, uh, if I would have, Put a wire up in the air and, and those of you that were with me were a witness that we were pegging uh western california washington oregon but we couldn't get anywhere east it was really the the, the oddest thing and Ham, you offered some some wisdom about that because if you, you notice you should have said something i'd have set you up a vertical antenna yeah, see right here metal pole <laughs> vertical antenna right here so it was probably interfering with my pattern getting out but you know part of field day is learning and so I'm already you know if I do this again next year um, really looking at uh, uh, trying something else different because uh, every year that I've done it other than this year I've always used the G5 RV and had great results uh, but, but would like to try some different things and learn some things so uh, so these are our totals. This is our summary report. Total contacts was 460. Uh, total points, 712. And there's a breakdown of it. Uh, CW had 200. Digital had 52. Phone had 208. For the total of 460. That doesn't include GoDo. Right. That, that does not include GoDo. So... So that's just another that this is a screen from the actual logging software and then here's a uh, nice map of all the states that we were able to hit and uh, Canada and Hawaii and as Carolyn mentioned very, very early on uh, they were able to get uh, Alaska and Hawaii so can anybody tell what the one state we didn't get is Colorado, Nebraska. <laughs> Delaware. Delaware. That's yeah. always been a hard one. Yeah. That in Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands. I got two. I have one year that I had them all except the Virgin Islands. See, I think on this screen it's showing, yeah, Delaware right there is the one. 
We did not get. As evidenced by their past center. Uh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is another map uh, showing um, where you know all our signals went. Uh, Joe, do you want to expand on sure. that? Is that the Cape Bird Islands on that one off of West Coast of Africa? I'm sorry, say that again. Is that the Cape Bird Islands off the West Coast of Africa? I think so. I can look the contact up and get that back to you. That's cool. no, that's I, bet, I, I bet what that is, that's a, that's a station that doesn't have the, the grid on it. Usually the, that spot right there is where they land. It, that's possible. It's, it's real close to where the Cape Birds are. Actually, that may be a little bit more. So I, create, I wanted to create, it was important for me to create this uh, map to show everybody um, kind of the fun that we had with Field Day and what we could do with field improvised antennas. Because the, the whole point of field day is to get out in the field and field improvise. So none of the antennas were like prepared. Uh, the, the 20 meter vertical, the, the, the infet that uh, Carolyn ran, they were all field expedient. Now granted, they were commercial antennas, about 20 meters of home route, but they were all, had to be put up in the field as a function of this. Now if you go to this website, adventureradio.de, it's a really cool site. Um, and to Steve's point, I'll tell you why his point happened. You go to that website and you open it up and you feed it an ADIF log, whatever you get that log from. You can get it from your logging program. You can go to Logbook of the World and export all your contacts, wherever you get your ADIF file from. You feed it to the website and it says, hang on a minute. You don't have your latitude and longitudes with the ADIF file. I'll solve that problem for you. I'll do a QRZ lookup against the call sign, and mm, it'll get close to where that where that call sign really lives. Now, if a call sign doesn't, then you end up in the uh, Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Atlant uh, off of Africa. Well, because if you uh, look, what that is, that's zero launch, zero lat, zero zero. Yeah, zero zero grid. Um, but yeah, so it's real easy. I took the combined file that we had for the uh, field day and just you, you go to the website, you, you choose the file, it ingests it, it says give me a minute, and it chugs along for about three or four minutes and then it spits out the graph that you saw, which is a really cool way to show non amateur radio people some of the enthusiastic things you can do with amateur radio. Because here's the thing that I was just flabbergasted by, because I wasn't sure what I was going to see when I fed it the log. I was flabbergasted to see that we went literally around the world from Germantown, Tennessee, with field expedient technology. Meaning, it's not a rig, it's not an amplifier, it's not a 70 foot tower, it's a, it's a wire thrown up in a tree. And we were able to get around the world. To me, that's just amazing. Um, so, I was impressed by that. If you're interested and would like to walk through this website, I'll be glad to walk through this uh, with you. But if you can scroll up for just a second, John, you can see some of the things that it gives you here. Um, you just pick your file. Um, you don't have to do anything else other than that and just say go, and it'll create the map. Now, if you want to do some color coding with you, you get some options and you can let it choose, hey, show me the different bands or show me the different modes, and it'll give you different pin colors for the different modes. So if you wanted to see where our CW went, you could pick the different mode for uh, CW or phone or satellite or uh, digital. So those are options. And if you only want to see where 20 meters is going. So if you want to take uh, a log that you've got for like 10 years of log and you want to feed it and say, show me just my 20 meter band. I want to look at the propagation over the years for 20 meters. You can feed the log and say, just show me 20 meters. And you get a really good idea of how the propagation has varied over the years. Or you could parse your log down and say, okay, I want to do one year at a time. It's a really interesting, fun tool to graphically look at where your contacts are. Anyway, I belabored that for a moment, so we'll move on. Can what else? Go ahead. Can you just leave the map up there, man? I want to take a picture of it. Sure. And then there's also a close-up of the United States. I'll, I'll hand the mic back to John. All right. Maybe. <laughs> I 
Okay, there we go. It's uh, zoomed in a little bit on just what we did in the uh, United States. So uh, the big question is, will you be there next year? We had to drop from one class. We were going to do 4A, but we had a last minute cancellation. Uh, so we were 3A this year, which I will tell you, I worked a station that was a 21A. It was an unbelievable 21 transmitter. Uh, so uh, some dates to remember, Winter Field Day coming up January 25th and 26th. I'd be willing to bet money it's not going to be 101 degrees that day. So my, <laughs> I don't think we'll be doing that one outside either. And then, of course, next year, uh, June 28th and 29th. So we will provide more details. Uh, but if you wish to run a station, be a team cap, I mean, the more the merrier. Um, please, you know, just let us know. And uh, you don't have to decide tonight. We, we've got a, a year to plan this thing. Uh, but we, we really should be able to to make it even bigger and better next year. So, anybody have any questions, comments? I had a lot of fun. I, I worked yeah. on a 20 meter station. If you could hear it on the, yeah, I, I got to work the uh, 20 meter station for a while in the evening, and the, the antenna did great. If you could hear it, you could work it. Didn't really have any. Problems. I didn't even call CQ. I just tuned up and down the band and hear somebody and I tried to work them. I had a lot of fun. So didn't have to park and bark like the Steve Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting on the hood. All right. Like I said, John, yes. what is the difference between you said it was a 3A station or a 4A? Uh, that's the number of transmitters that we're using. So uh, we were originally going to do 4A. We we're going to have a 20 meter and what, a 1580? Uh, both doing voice, CW, and then digital. And so that would have been four that count towards points. Okay. Satellite and GOTA don't count towards points. You had, what, 50? Yeah. I, I was running the, the go to station and I had an absolute blast with the go to station. So the go to station is the get on the air station. And the get on the air contacts count differently for field day. Um, they don't count for your point total per se, they count towards um, bonus points. The go to station gives you bonus points. And one of the uh, the wonderful things that I got to experience running the GOTA station this year is just the simplicity of it all. This was the GOTA law. It was just super simple. It was just a notebook and a pen. Now, I'll, I'll type all these in digitally and we'll submit them digitally, but for sitting there logging, it's not very intimidating to sit in front of a radio with a pen and a piece of paper and just log what you talk to. But what was super fun was to sit down with Tyler's children they never made an HF contact. And his little daughter sat down at the station. And we, we landed on a pileup. And she tossed out, uh, we were using Whiskey for November Romeo Charlie. She tossed that out like three times and shattered the pileup. I mean, they stopped <laughs> dead for her. To acknowledge her, the, the guy that was running the pileup stopped, slowed down, came back, acknowledged her. It was just, the smile on her face was just amazing. And to me, that was what was for me the fun. And then we turned it around and did it again, because uh, Tyler's son, a couple of contacts later, we sat down. He didn't have the luck of breaking a pile up that quick. It took him a little more work. He was getting to the point where he was almost frustrated. But he got it through and he got his contact. Um, and then we had, um, we had a couple of people that were just walking through the park actually walk up and they made their first contacts on the radio and they were, they went, uh, where'd they go? Um, they went, they stayed in the, uh, the four. So they didn't go too terribly far, but they still made their first contact. One and, Virginia and Maryland maybe, Zion and his father? Uh, Sarah was uh, uh, NF and then North Carolina. Z-Y-E-N? Uh, yeah, there's, where was that? Yes, sir, we did make that one as well. Their students have class name. 
and they made contacts, and we got a couple of students from uh, Field Day, so it was a great opportunity. I got called in the ham radio's open house. It was an awesome opportunity for us as amateurs to go out and have uh, an opportunity to showcase what we could do and how we could do it, and just the simplicity of it all. That's what I love about the GOTA station. It was just simple. We sat in front of the radio and made contacts. Um, and we had over 50 contacts on the GOTA station. So most of those GOTA stations were people that had never made contacts before. Now, uh, Tyler sat down and worked it for about an hour and racked up a bunch of contacts. Not a bunch, but he racked up some contacts because that was his first time getting on HF. So um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yep. So, uh, does anybody have any other questions, comments, suggestions? Like I said, we want to keep building this thing bigger and better every year. So, I uh, uh, hope to see everybody out uh, next year. And with that, I think it's time to take a break. Anybody want to pay for lunch, Bill? I'm here. Why don't we break for what? Uh, about 10 minutes? Uh, get yourself some refreshments, and uh, we'll uh, move on to our next topic.